Hey everybody, sorry, just finishing up drinking some coffee. Today we're talking about Matthew 7, 21 to 23. This is really a continuation of last week's discussion um, where we talked about a tree and its fruit. Jesus warns us to beware of false prophets. Beware of false prophets. They will come in, uh, they will look like sheep, they will be disguised as sheep but they will be inwardly ravenous wolves. And he warns us about this, and he says you will know them by their fruit. Bad trees or unhealthy trees produce bad fruit, whereas um, healthy trees produce, of course, good fruit. Another thing he pointed out was that trees of a certain variety can only bear a certain kind of fruit anyway. So What we discovered as we looked at it was, yes, it was a warning for us to beware of false teachers and even a warning for false teachers to understand that one day, ultimately, these unhealthy trees or these unhealthy uh, plants would be uprooted and thrown into the fire, this foreshadowing the, uh, the judgment that is to come. But we really found out that it's our job to notice and expose false teachers. It's really the job of the people in the congregation. You are part of the body of Christ. Therefore, you should be able to recognize and discern when someone is being genuine or not. So I had you guys sit down with a sheet of paper and write out what you thought um, Jesus was talking about. How will you know them by their fruits? What kind of fruits would they be perhaps? I don't know what you wrote down. I just wanted to get you thinking in terms of what Jesus was talking about. I even encourage you to read on, but I want to read for us the final three verses. So it's in chapter 20, or excuse me, chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. And he says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I've said this before. This is some of the scariest words in all of scripture, in my opinion. And we discussed this not too long ago uh, as far as commonly misunderstood passages of scripture in youth group. And we did that in both middle school and in high school. But as we look at this again, I want to point out a few things. Like I said, it's a continuation of, uh, of what Jesus was talking about before, about being aware of false teachers. But now he broadens it. And he says, there will be many on that day who say to me, Lord, Lord. So he's not just talking about false teachers now. He's talking about anyone who says, who claims that Jesus is Lord in in word alone. And, And he points something out that has caused me for a long time to have questions. What you'll notice maybe with me is that in that first passage of scripture that we read you will recognize them by their fruit so people would be recognizable as either Jesus followers or not by their fruit what they produce and that got us talking about the question of what exactly is that and it even says in our passage this this um, this time that the one who does the will of my father the one who does the will of my father and then he lists these people who say they say he is lord they prophesy in his name they cast out demons in his name and they do other unnamed mighty works in his name and jesus says to those people the one who it seems like are the ones doing the will of the father the ones who it seems like are bearing good fruit He says, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I never knew you. Hence why I believe this is the scariest passage of scripture, perhaps in all of scripture. Um, 
it has confused me for some time because uh, of these sort of discrepancies. Now these two passages go together and one thing I kind of want to do to ease the tension is just let you know right off the bat, even going back to verse 18, Jesus says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly. And so just like the rest of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is intensifying things by pointing inside of us, right? The, the reason we have a problem with prayer or the reason we have a problem with fasting or the reason we have a problem with all the various things that Jesus talks about is because of our heart. The reasons we have a problem with um, murder is, is deeper than just people murdering. It, it, it's, it's about the heart. So in the same way Jesus is pointing out here, it's the heart of a person. You can come to him and say all you want. You can even do amazing and impossible things in his name. But it doesn't matter if you don't know Jesus and more importantly, if he doesn't know you. Now, I'm going to read John 640. Because this is John quoting Jesus as well. Those who do the will of my father. Those are the ones who will enter the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus says this, For this is the will of my father, that everyone who looks on the son and believes in him should have eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day. If your faith and your hope is in Jesus Christ alone and you are looking to him in that relationship that he's established between you two as the, the means of your salvation, then according to God's word, you are in the will of the Father. But if you look at things like what you can do or what you say, void of an actual relationship with him, you could prophesy, you could exercise demons, you could do any countless sort of mighty works and claim that you're doing them for Jesus, but it doesn't matter. It is about your heart condition. So on the one hand, we have to recognize, those of us who are believers, we have to be able to recognize who the false teachers, the false prophets are. We have a responsibility to root out that sort of thing amongst us. But first, you need to be sure, you need to reflect. What are you trusting in? Are you actually a healthy plant? And that's tough. That's going to make us do some soul searching, of course. And that's what I think Jesus intended it for. I don't think these verses were intended to be comfortable for us. I think they were intended to drive us to this, this question. What is the deciding factor on that day, Jesus says? Will you be one of the people who say to him, Lord, Lord, because you have a relationship with him? Or will you be one of the people who claim that we did these mighty things in your name? All right. Again, I hope to come to you in the next day or so with another video for you guys to use kind of as a devotional. As you think about these things, I'd love to talk with you in the forum. I have, uh, you can download WhatsApp on your phone and you can shoot me a text my number is 920-248-0201. You can shoot me a text and I will add you to the WhatsApp group so that you can talk with all of us from your youth group. Um, that's open to middle schoolers, high schoolers, of course, middle schoolers, it, you know, if, if your parents say so, all right? But you can download it on your tablet, whatever. I'd love to talk with you guys about these things and if you have questions, and it's just a cool way for us to connect with each other during this time. So I'm praying for you. I love you guys and I miss you. And uh, I, can't, I can't wait to see you again in person. So until that day, we'll keep doing this.